I'm I kind of representing landscape architects and how they perceive uh, uh, tree species. Basically, uh, I'm looking at seven questions here. Uh, I'll go. Uh, I asked these questions to myself when I, I was preparing this presentation. The first one is, what is the scope of landscape architecture? Uh, it, it, is a, it is a huge spectrum that we deal with as professionals, right from uh, natural landscapes to design landscapes to micro level to macro level, from a courtyard uh, landscape design to a city or subsidy level landscape open space structure. And then we are dealing with various typologies of uh, residential landscapes, commercial landscapes, ecological uh, restoration projects and so on. So the palette is very vast for a single professional to deal with and uh, the kind of projects that you come that come to us are more urban kind of projects um, th these the projects that uh, the ecologists or botanists or restorers are working on uh, those are kind of very rare opportunities for us actually if we look at a profession then we, uh, which services a landscape architectural professional can provide depending on our education depending on our exposure that we get in the course and in and the uh, training that we do with senior landscape architects and so on. So basically uh, what we look at or what we understand what we do is we as landscape architect he designs a space which involves visualizing a space uh, with its three dimensions and also with its fourth dimension of time because landscape projects are very dynamic though the client expect us to produce very good results in very short time still we have to visualize uh, as professionals with the aspect of time and it's in relation to the past present and future and mainly for people the users are people that is the primary user of our design landscapes and to create a place with an experiential quality so it has got a visual component and it has got a non-visual component like fragrance, sound and so many things that you need to experience the landscape. So there is a qualitative component to it in terms of its experience or human experience. Then I just try to sort out in terms of what a landscape architect can do and what he is not probably. So on the right hand side uh, you will find that uh, he is not a botanist, geologist, ecologist and so on and he derives the essence from all these fields so we cannot just learn about design we have to learn a lot of things associated uh, or which leads to design decisions or design making process so which is very crucial and it eats away a lot of our intellectual energy in terms of whether to do this whether to do that it's very subjective at times and very rarely uh, and we have to make uh, objective decisions out of a very subjective nature of data and information that you have and which is a very challenging task for a design professional um, then in that whole scenario what we can do as landscape architects we can think about nature and man together that is our duty because we cannot forget people when we are designing landscapes then we can observe and analyze we can synthesize information very nicely that is our that skill is really imparted in the course of architecture or design profession how to synthesize data that you have got and make sense out of a huge amount of information that you have we can rationalize make decisions draw on paper that is a very unique skill skill which we have we can express our ideas uh, on paper and we can actually uh, make people visualize and make part of make them part of the whole process like rahul i think he has left he he did that through his drawings or ma'am's drawings also sort of represented that then uh, we can plan for future uh, we can design then we can definitely inspire we are not activists very rarely you will find a professional being an activist frankly people have no time for it because they are so engrossed and that doesn't work many times uh, then we can inspire influence definitely guide people towards creating enhancing modifying preserving conserving environment through landscape design so we use landscape design as a tool so it's a tool for us or it's a kind of way where we can put forward our approach towards uh, ecological or towards conservation of environment then uh, how do we look at or what is the purpose of trees in a design landscape basically it is for functional purpose like giving shade fruits flowers it adds life to the whole hardscape and harsh environment that we live in the very basic purpose of trees then obviously ecological uh, thoughts are there uh, but it is one part of the whole uh, set of aspects 
it's not on the only os aspect that we can look into it's more complex when we are uh, taking design decisions ecology is definitely one part because we are dealing with live uh, components then aesthetics covers major not major but that is an inherent part of we cannot forget aesthetics so we have form color and non visual aesthetics uh, with its fragrance and sound and so on then cultural aspects where which where people are associated with uh, landscapes and generally we are taught to select our species based on this i mean that is what we learn in our course and then we accordingly we create a planting palette based on i mean of trees shrubs creepers and ground covers and so on with whatever information we have then uh, i'll put up an issue here that we have lot of limitations um, i appeal to you that as experts from other fields we probably you can help us first thing is i think varsha ma'am must have faced these things uh, in her project uh, first is understanding the associational behavior of trees with other flora and fauna we don't know that actually then predicting the root spread i mean uh, very difficult to find uh, information about that the depth and levels at which the trees can grow and predicting the life span and growth rate to almost exact kind of um, data which we many times require in design process then what a landscape architect has to depend on many years experience of his own to get this information on his own but still he might not be able to get it completely or comprehensively because the span is very short project span also our life span also everything so <laughs> then what is the problem so what I, i'll take example of my research work which i did uh, with the funding from the university and i tried to sort of look at only tree species i, I took around 150 tree species where there is information available there are around 400 tree species in flora of maharashtra but as i said let's look at them from the landscape architect's point of view and how i can really synthesize or uh, sort of take the information together to make it useful or handy to a landscape architect professional so at least he takes looks at minimum 150 trees when he is taking decision so the problem with the uh, data is it provides information lot of information is available there are so many scholars uh, many of them are sitting here who have written very scholarly books articles uh, and they have done extensive research especially i'm talking about pune region and the focus is providing more and more information and which is very very authentic very very um, useful to sort of uh, look at and uh, definitely there is an effort but i find there is a um, uh, it doesn't really mention any specific scale or special aspect and the experiential understanding of that whole combination of tree species that is something which we really have to derive with lot of effort and uh, that is something which is i find is a limitation to the available data then my research concerns were um, how the, the, the whole information to us is in bits and pieces that if i have to really uh, prepare a planting plan then i have to sit with 10 12 books around me and then i i really at the end of it i get confused what to plant and what to not so it's a bit confusing at times because there are multiple sources then um, uh, the applicative understanding at one source the source uh, i mean one single source is not available and then again there is there is um, there is no framework where one can sort the information as per our uh, decision making process so there is no sorting mechanism of that information so these are the research con uh, concerns that i started with an appraisal of tree species that if i want to compare one tree with the other how do i rate it if i have for one characteristic uh, palette i have said 10 species and which one i choose finally i don't know so there is something which uh, needs to be done in terms of its appraisal then how so how uh, the information about tree species can be made available comprehensively at one source this is just an attempt i am not an expert in botany i have just tried to use the information and put it in such a way which can be useful for landscape architects or professionals and architects so uh, there was an idea of uh, coming up with tree species compilation as part of this larger project where i was working on a comprehensive guide of tree species for sustainable site planning in maharashtra where uh, this guide can uh, be dovetailed into other uh, 
uh, sort of frameworks of um, uh, MOEF and Griha and Terry Griha, where this can be part of their major documentation as a guide for professionals. And the tree species uh, data and the compilation was a small part of this particular research project. Then uh, the tree species were looked at from the basic geomorphological regions of Kokan, uh, Sahihadri, Mawar, Desh, Marathwada, Khandesh and Vidabha because they are very basic um, uh, they are very basic to our framework. Then there was an attempt to data collect, collect the data, organize it and process it in a way where we can sort it under these heads. So these trees information from various sources from net, from books, some there were some hundred or 150 uh, uh, sources from where the information was collected and it was put into an excel sheet uh, where you can just click one head and sort the information. If I just want to say evergreen uh, growing in Kokan, so I get a list of it. So it's very handy for a professional to sort of look at one list. This is in process, I wish to put it in a CD or something, but this is just a compilation right now. And then also uh, uh, sort of uh, supplement it with a graphic data. We are very used to graphics. So we can immediately relate to a graphics where we have this kind of a um, one page, it's like a kundali of one tree where uh, you have everything which is required by a landscape architect. Hmm. So this part covers, tells us whether it's indigenous, non-indigenous, invasive, non-invasive because many times it's uh, indigenous but it's invasive. So not all indigenous species are recommended. So this is very, very crucial information in terms of choosing a tree species. Then we have its botanical name, common name, then all flowering, fragrance, everything is here. Then which region do you find this? Uh, so there is a map. So if you are doing a project in Vidarbha, probably you will find a certain set. You can sort out those species which grow in Vidarbha. I think Ketki CD, Mansi CD helped me a lot. And then uh, I build onto that data to sort of include it into this matrix. And then you have a graphic which is very, very crucial to us uh, in proportion with human figure. Then we have tree spread, tentative lifespan, then uh, what is the form of the species, how does it look as a 2D graphic. Then this is the basic information about growth rate, form, foliage. Then there was this uh, uh, head called roots. I have found it very hard to find information about root system of trees, very, very difficult. And uh, ma many uh, pages I have left blank because I could not find information about roots really. Then we have a whole set of graphics where there is a graphic illustration, full form of trees, then leaves, uh, the bark, everything. So how does it look? And then this whole section, these two columns, this is about how it is useful in terms of conservation. What are the values? So this is a value analysis of that tree species. And this is about which is the uh, preferable soil, which is referable climate, then how can it propagate it, then it is, uh, what is its tolerance to various aspects, then this is about uh, can it, wha what can it do to microclimate, uh, then also I think there is, uh, 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 there is this, how you can plant it, whether it's advisable, so just one minute. Uh, whether it's advisable, <laughs> advisable to plant in uh, one single, as a single tree or, a, or in a group or in a line or whatever, how does it look on plan when we plant that and so on. So this became very handy, uh, this, uh, this is a very handy information for a design professional. So this basically tree matrix, what was achieved was availability of information comprehensively at one source, ability to sort out the information in various ways depending on your own uh, priorities and availability of textual and visual information together composed in a compact handy form in the form of illustrated graphics for each species and applicative understanding of the data. So I'll skip this basically that is I just want to show this as an illustration and I feel these are my uh, viewpoints or other uh, suggestions or other I don't know. Um, there has to be a collaborative research for generation and sharing of knowledge. There has to be a collaboration. We don't have any uh, way out. Uh, and if there are uh, more such data or the information which is available to landscape architects, they can be more uh, you know, sensitive towards or they can apply that uh, knowledge to our projects like associated fauna, flora, root systems, adaptability to various uh, regions. Then there is a need to do micro region maps like for aquifers he was mentioning that if you want to really know the 
okay and <laughs> so and making it accessible uh, is another uh, in an interactive form so these are the things which i think we can collaborate on uh, in terms of tree species okay thank you